Hello friends, it's me Jimmy Cotter. This is the 12th chapter in the Java Multi-Threading Tutorial Series. In this chapter, we will talk about thread pools in Java. So first, let us understand what exactly is a thread pool. So if you search for thread pool in Wikipedia, you will come up with this article and here they have a nice diagram illustrating it. So as you would expect, a thread pool is a collection of threads. So uh, in this example, as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, total six threads and each of them will be executing tasks concurrently and we maintain a queue uh, that is full of tasks. For example, if we have six or 12 tasks, then we will maintain all of them in a queue and at a time we can execute only six of them. So we will execute first six then we will execute the second batch so it will be like that one advantage of using a thread pool is the use of threads for example here you have six threads in the first batch it will be used for executing six tasks from the queue then later the same thread will be used for executing the next batch so it will go on like that and the overhead of creating or maintaining a separate thread in your program manually is eliminated in thread pools so let us start working on it i have a sample work task that implements a runnable so the task that we provide to a thread pool has to be implementing a runnable or a callable interface let us keep it simple let us implement it with a familiar runnable method and i have created a time variable here so that is maintained to check how much time the task was uh, hold it in the queue so if you come to the example you can see that we have a queue here so after we add the task into a queue it will wait for some time until the thread is acquired so we have to make measure that time and that will be done from these three lines of code we will reduce the or decrement the created time from the current time once the thread starts executing so we will get how much time it was actually waiting on the queue to get the processor then in order to simulate a complex task we just added a sleep of three seconds and after that we will print this message that uh, this task was completed and this variable task name is for identifying different task objects for example we will create a multiple work tasks and in order to differentiate or in order to uniquely identify a task we simply give a task name like task one task two etc so let us start working on implementing the uh, thread pool part so i'm going to create another class thread pool example and obviously we need public static void main and instead of handling things in the static way i'm going to create an object of this class so thread pool example example equals new thread pool example then i will call example dot start uh, thread pool example so just some names nothing fancy okay now we need to create this method and in order to create a thread pool, you have to use an executor's executor service. So uh, just uh, see what I'm going to write here. So it will be executor service. So you can see that java.util.concurrent is available. So we will create executor service and this is the variable name. Then it is available as a static one in the executors class so there is no constructor available you have to use the static method so it will be executors you can see that java.concurrent.executors is present and there are a couple of uh, methods that we can use to create executor service so for the uh, simplicity let us start with a simple thread executor so what this will do is it will create a thread pool with only one thread so only one task will be executed at a time when once we add a task into the queue so if you come to this image example then instead of these six thread pool six threads in the pool we will have only one thread so let us create some work task now so work task task one equals new work task and let me give a name like task one then we need to create a couple of more uh, tasks so let me create one two three four five six i think six is enough 
and uh, I have to provide a unique variable name. And the next thing is we have to add this work task to this executor service. So that is very simple. This executor service is maintaining a queue internally. You don't have to maintain it yourself. So executor service dot submit. So if I if you check this, you can see that we can provide a callable and a runnable task. For now, we are providing a runnable task. And uh, if you're new to Java, uh, since we are implementing this runnable, this work task is old, already any a runnable task. So I'm going to add each task. So task one, task two, task three, task four, task five, and task six. Now you can see that each task will take minimum three seconds to complete because we have a three second delay uh, in each of them. So the thing is, uh, if we add what task one, it will immediately start executing by the single thread available in the pool. Then the submit, uh, then the task two will be maintained in the queue until the task one is over. Similarly, task three, task four, task five. And the last thing we have to do is to wait for the executor service to finish everything and we call this shutdown. So if you look at the documentation, initiate an orderly shutdown in which previously Previously submitted tasks are executed, but no new tasks are accepted. So after adding all the tasks that you want to execute using this thread pool, you have to call a shutdown. So it will wait until all the tasks are complete. So right now it is going to take around six into three, around 18 seconds to complete this whole task. Let us check whether it is working properly by running this program. So you can see that the first task, only one task is executing at a time. The first task executed, uh, and you can see that it only waited for five milliseconds because there was no waiting delay at all. But the second task has to wait for three thousand three seconds because the first task took around three seconds to complete. Similarly, the third task has to wait for six seconds because three from here, three from here, and so on. So you can see that the last task has to wait for fifteen seconds to finish its execution. So that is about the basics of uh, of a thread pool. Here we have only a single thread. Now let us try something more interesting. Let us create a number of threads. So if you use this new fixed thread pool method, you can actually provide how many threads that you want in your program. So for example, if I give four right now, then out of these six tasks, four of them will be executed parallelly. So the maximum wait time will reduce from 15 seconds to three seconds because only the five and six will have to wait because the, in the first iteration these four tasks will be running then after completing those four tasks uh, all four of the threads will be free and two of them will start working on this five and six so let us see uh, before uh, let us see how this running just before that I, I have to show you that the thread name because everything is thread one because there is only one thread in the previous example now let us start running this program and as you can see that the four tasks started executing parallelly using thread one thread two thread three and thread four then a one and two completed after 302 milliseconds which is around three seconds and then uh, uh, here, uh, task completed one and two. Then you can see that those same threads started working on task five and six. So the maximum wait time was three seconds only. Previously it was 15 seconds. Now we took the fourth task at a time. So the maximum wait time was three seconds. So as you would expect, if you if we add two more tasks, then first four will be executed first. Then the fourth, the next four will be executed next. There is one more thread pool technique available that is the cache thread pool. So what cache thread pool will do is it will create as many threads as possible in Java uh, in your program. For example, in this case, uh, let me, oh, I'm sorry, I just removed task 5 and 6. I just have to remove these two. So if I go and create a cache thread pool, instead of a limit, what will happen is Java will create, JVM will create threads as long as, uh, I mean, as much as it is required and possible. So, for example, in this case, we have six work tasks. So, it will create six work tasks right now. So, let me just run this program. 
and you can see that six threads were created and all of the to, and all of the tasks, all the six tasks was executed in parallel and after that everything was completed. So you can see that there was no waiting time at all for the task, everything executed within one or two milliseconds. So that's it guys, that's the uh, overall view of thread pools. So if you want only a single thread executor, you can use this new single thread executor or if you want to limit the number of threads available in your uh, Available for this task. You can use this new fixable thread pool If you want Java or JVM to manage the number of threads and the usability of them You can go with new cache thread pools so that's it guys i hope you got a good idea about thread pools in java so as always thank you for watching this video i'll see you on the next one